All right, problem number two. I'm going to read the paragraph that goes with this chart. A zoo sponsored a one-day contest to name a new baby elephant. Zoo visitors deposited entries in a special box between noon, t equals zero, and 8 p.m., t equals eight. The number of entries in the box, t hours after noon, is modeled by a differentiable function e for zero to eight. Values of e and hundreds of entries at various times t are shown in the table above. All right, part A says to use the data in the table to approximate the rate in hundreds of entries per hour at which entries were being deposited at time t equals six, show the computations that lead to your answer. All right, it says something about a rate and I notice that it's entries per hour. To me, that I know a rate is gonna stand for the slope and I would like to find the slope at six which is going to be somewhere between five and seven. So if I want a slope, I basically just need to use the slope formula. So it's going to be 21 minus 13 over seven minus five. That's going to give me um, eight over two, which will be four. And it did say that it's in hundreds of entries per hour. So it will be 400 entries. If you got that correct, um, and it's actually 400 entries per hour because it was a rate and this was worth one point. All right, part B. Um, use a trapezoidal sum with the four subintervals given by the table to approximate the value of one eighth times the integral from zero to eight, and then using correct units, explain the meaning of that in terms of the number of entries. Okay, first thing that we need to do is we're going to do one eighth. And then we are calculating this using a trapezoidal sum with four subintervals. I know, notice that the intervals are not equal. So just like we did, and I believe this is the third problem that we've done that's asked us to do this, we actually have to find the area of each trapezoid separately. And that's one half times the height times base one plus base two. So I'm going to do that four different times. Okay, so for the first one, I'm gonna do one half. The height, the distance between those two will be two. So the height's going to be two. Base one is zero, base two is four. Okay, and then one half times the distance between the two and the five is three. So the height will be three. The sum of the bases are four plus 13. And then plus one half, um, the distance between these two is two. So the height will be two. The bases are 13 plus 21. And then plus one half times the distance between seven and eight is one. And then the sum of the bases will be 21 plus 23. All right, so I've got one eighth on the outside. And then on the inside, if I calculate it, it's four plus 25.5 plus 34 plus 22. And that gives me one eighth times 85.5. And then that gives me 10.688. <clears throat> and so I got that. I do know that because I'm dealing in hundreds, it's going to be 10.688 hundreds. And then from there, it says using correct units, explain the meaning of this. Well, we know if we do 1 over B minus A on the outside, it's going to be the average number of whatever this is. So it's going to be the average number of hundreds of entries. So 10.688 is the average number of hundreds of entries from the time period um, t equals 0 to t equals 8, or we could say from noon to 8 p.m. All right, okay, so then let's see how we would score this one. First of all, I'm going to get one point if I showed that I used a trapezoidal sum. I'm going to get one point for getting the right answer, and then I'm going to get one point for correctly explaining the meaning. Okay, part C, at 8 p.m., volunteers began to process the entries. They processed the entries at a rate modeled by the function p, where p of t equals that formula, hundreds of entries per hour, so entries per hour, for 8 to 12. According to the model, how many entries had not yet been processed by midnight? So I want to know how many entries, and this one, it says how many had not been processed. Well, this one right here will tell me how many had been processed, so I'll find out how many entries there were and subtract how many um, 
had been processed, and that will give me how many had not been processed, if that made sense at all. Okay, so if I take the integral of P, that will give me, um, it will go from entries per hour to just how many entries, so that's exactly what I want to do. And I'm going to take it from 8 to 12, because they began processing them at 8, and they ended at 12. And when I do that, um, we can use Math 9 to get that, by the way. And when we do that, we will get actually 16. Alrighty, so that's how many have been processed. We know at time at 8 o'clock there were 2,300 entries. So what we can do, my answer is going to be 23 minus how many they were able to process. So there were 700 entries that have not been processed yet. Okay, so that would be my answer. This was worth two points. If you set up an integral, that was worth one point. And then if you correctly got the answer, that would be another point. Okay, part D. According to the model from part C, at what time were the entr entries being processed most quickly? So if I'm looking for process most quickly, that is a maximum. And I want to, um, if I want to know it was being processed the most quickly, um, I want to know when is the rate a max. So if I want to know when the rate is a max, I need to take the derivative of the rate and set it equal to zero and go from there. So we're going to actually take the derivative of the rate, which will be 3t squared minus 60t plus 298, and we would like to set that equal to zero. And from here, I would suggest using the zero feature of your calculator. And if you use the zero feature of your calculator, you're going to get two answers. You're going to get 9.814, and you're going to get 10.816. So those are the two times where um, those are critical numbers. So now, if I'm looking for a maximum, and I know an interval, I know it goes from 8 to 12, I'm going to find P of the endpoint, so P of 8. P of 12, I'm going to find P of 9.814, and I'm going to find P of 10.816. So I'm going to find all of those values and see which one gives me a max. So if I plug 8, and we're going to plug these into P, P plug into P, because we don't plug them into the derivative, we plug them into the original. So if I plug 8 into the P, I get 0 as an answer. If I plug 12 in, I get 8. If I plug in 9.814, I get 5.089. And if I plug 10.816 in, I get 2.911. And I am looking for a max, and I notice that this is the, the 8 is the biggest number I get. So let's see what they want me to do with this. It says, at what time were the entries, entries being processed most quickly? So at t equals 12 <clears throat> would be my answer. And that's because my highest value, the, that was the biggest value. So um, from there, I guess I'm done with my answer. Okay, this was worth three points. If you found where the derivative equals zero, give yourself a point. If you tested all of the endpoints, so we tested the endpoints and we tested the critical numbers, give yourself a point. If you actually found an answer, give yourself a point. And it has to be the right one, of course. So then we should be set.